Path of Exile is a complex game, which is great if you enjoy making your own build, finding synergies, or breaking the system. But if you just want a net deck, net decking being a term from card games where you copy someone else's deck card for card, or in PoE, you might just say copying a build, well, if you want to net deck someone and try your best to create a carbon copy of their character, it's a little bit more complicated. This is why I always advise new players that they don't need the best possible build. They should instead look for the best possible guide, something that goes into the mechanics, items, leveling, and upgrade paths. I want to be clear, there's no shame in copying a build, and I know making your own build is a goal or dream for a lot of people. But on that journey, the best way to learn is by copying. Seeing how Seng works, adapting it, and then hopefully making it better, or at the very least, learning Seng along the way. If you like discussions focused around PoE mechanics, the economy, or builds, be sure to sub to the channel and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload. And if you find this video to be helpful, leave a like and let me know down in the comments a time when you got yourself into trouble copying a build, or a time when you pulled off a successful copy of a complicated build. Today I want to talk about something that I'm going to term hidden cost, and I'm going to define it as items that don't immediately look that difficult to reproduce or that expensive, but are far rarer than they first appear. And more often than not, you don't need these items to play the build. They are the $10,000 champagne you're using to ice your cake. But if you go on playing the build without planning proper replacements, you may find yourself short on funds with a build half finished. A good example of this would be the shield from my strength stacker. At first glance, you might say, oh, it's just a red blade banner with strength on it. Gotcha. That's easy to replace. If you look closer, it also has all res, and I'm using that all res to res cap my character. It's not that hard to get a red blade banner with all res, nor is it that hard to get a red blade banner with strength, but getting both together on a corrupted one with no downside? That's going to be an incredibly difficult task. You can get that all res elsewhere on the build. It's not impossible to replace, but if you don't know that you have to replace it until you're three quarters of the way through gearing, you could easily be in for a pretty bad time. Another example of hidden cost is a mod that you'd expect the build to have on an item that you don't expect it to be on. A few people now have asked me, how do I deal with Corrupted Blood on my CI cast on Crit Forbidden Right character? I have Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you on one of my cluster jewels. It wasn't even a particularly expensive piece of a build, at least compared to the rest of my gear. But most of the time, everyone thinks to use Corrupted Blood on a normal jewel or on a unique jewel, instead of thinking about the fact that they could corrupt some cheap clusters and deal with a mechanic that way. So, if you know that you need Corrupted Blood immunity, and you get it elsewhere, it's not a big deal. But if you just assume that the build has some other way of dealing with it and never solve the problem, you're going to be in for a very nasty death. For my third example, a ring from my Fizz Trapper. Again, at a glance, it might not seem that hard to get. 8% life and some lightning res. But 8% life is really important on a build like my Fizz Trapper that runs a relatively low life percentage and has a lot of other layered defenses which make life exponentially more valuable. And without res cap, well, you're just going to die. So again, it's a critically important piece. This means that you don't necessarily need a ring with 8% life and the res, but you need to make up for it somewhere, either by wearing a rare ring, or aiming for strength, life, and res as implicits across two unique rings, since for crit chance and multi are damage, and therefore easily replaced, the build has plenty of damage you could just drop them and not really notice. With any of these items, if you simply go to buy a replacement, with the possible exception being the cluster, as I said that wasn't too expensive, but with the shield and with the rings, you could easily spend 20, 30, or even 40 exalts if you just wanted to try to buy a close carbon copy. It makes the build look far more expensive. And yes, I do have these items, but again, you don't need them in any case. With the shield, you need a red blade banner, and you need all res. The two don't have to be combined, and strength is nice, but it doesn't have to be on a red blade banner either. In the case of a corruption, you need corrupted blood immunity. It could be a mastery on a tree. It could be a corruption on any jewel. The source doesn't matter. The effect does. And with a ring, you need the strength and res, and the life strongly advised. But you could get all of those stats just by using a vermilion ring. You'll lose a little damage, but on a build that has millions of DPS in mediocre gear, you're not going to miss the damage. 
and you're certainly going to notice the fact that you're not consistently dying. So the point of this video is to try to give you an outline of some of the things to watch for when you're copying builds, be it a POB made by a content creator you like, or just some random build you found on POE Ninja that you think looks cool. When you're copying someone else's build, some best practices include checking over all the items, take note of any corruptions, or take note of any scourge modifiers, and pay special attention to attributes, resistances, or other difficult to replace effects, such as corrupted blood or silence immunity. Some builds will rely more on uniques, and that's going to make them much easier to copy. But it's very difficult to copy a rare one for one in Path of Exile. In most cases, rares involve a lot of complex crafting processes, and sometimes a little bit of luck. There are cases where you can follow a simple step-by-step -step recipe using Harvest Craft and get what is effectively a carbon copy of an item. You could also use a mirror and skip all the hassle and just own a copy of the item. But for most people, what you're going to want to look at isn't the exact item itself, but instead what the item's trying to do. If a ring is being used to fix attributes, you can fix attributes using your tree, using the ring, or maybe by getting attributes on your gloves. If a belt's being used to fix resistances, you only need to fix resistances. They don't absolutely have to be on that belt. You could have the resistances on your shoes, and maybe you give something up for that, but as long as you're aware of what you're giving up and what you're gaining, that's totally fine. This is what makes PoE a game that you can play for a hundred or a thousand hours. And hopefully this video helps you the next time you try to play a build from one of your favorite content creators. Finally, I'd like to end with a piece of general advice, both when it comes to copying other builds or making your own. And that is, it's easy to get caught up in themes, like I want to play a fire build, or ascendancies like I want to play an elementalist, or skills like I want to play fire trap. When starting with making a build, there's two things I always look at. One, underlying mechanics. So if I'm looking at fire trap, what does fire trap synergize well with? Uh, flat added damage. And let's say I'm planning to play an Ignite build. Well, if I have a lot of flat added damage, and I also have Fire Trap, maybe I want to go Elementalist to take advantage of the fact that all added damage can now Ignite. These synergies lead to creating a much stronger build. Whereas if I just go, oh, Fire, Fire Trap, Fire, Chieftain, Ignite, Chieftain, Fire Trap. Cool. I've made a build, and I'm sure it functions, but it's going to be a weaker variant because you're not really adding that many synergies there. You're forcing a square peg into a round hole and making a weird square circle hole that doesn't quite work the way you hoped. So now I'm curious, what are some of your success stories when it comes to copying builds? What are some of the failures? The case where you did run out of money midway through gearing and you didn't realize something before you started? Or if you've made your own build, what was it and how did it go? I'd love to hear all of these thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.